Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Grace Point Church Nazarene on this 11 a.m. service on this second Sunday of August. The word of the Lord says from Psalm 134.1, Behold, bless, and praise the Lord, all servants of the Lord, who stand and serve by night in the house of the Lord. It says stand, so let's stand together, shall we? And let's worship together this morning as Pastor Emily comes and leads us today.
Congregation, you may be seated, and we're glad that you are with us today on this second Sunday of August, and uh, welcome to our service this morning. Uh, a couple things going on this week I want to let you know about. Uh, don't forget, Monday night is our prayer time at 7 o'clock. It is uh, online through Zoom, and we've been doing that for, uh, for quite a while now, and so we invite you to come and be a part of that with us. And if you haven't joined us, it's easy to do so. Just go to gracepoint.com. And uh, there will be a tab where you can just uh, sign in your name and email, and you will receive a link on Monday afternoon uh, for the Zoom meeting for Monday at 7. It lasts about 45 minutes, and uh, we get to pray for one another and, and just share with each other, and it's always good to, uh, to interact with that. So hope you can join us at 7 tomorrow night. 
Plus, also this week, we have our Bible study is back up and going. We go, we're going to move it this week from Thursday to Wednesday. So it's going to be Wednesday Bible study this week and not Thursday. So just this week, Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and to join is the same way if you haven't done so yet uh, by the website as well, like the prayer time. So um, got Christmas in July going on where uh, people bring in new toys uh, for our, our community that uh, second week of December. Uh, our Compassion Ministries that is headed up by our Pastor Judith Morris. And uh, Judith makes sure these toys get to places that need to in our community that will help underprivileged uh, families during that time of year. And so the toys come in now, and the box this morning is already full. And so we'll empty that. And you're also able to bring those by the church office. If you're not physically able to attend our services, we invite you to come by the office between 10 and 1 each day, Monday through Friday, to bring those toys to the office. You may do so uh, as well. Pastor Trevor has been leading our youth in these times. They'll meet again this Wednesday. And uh, he's coming now to pray for us this morning. And then we will receive the offering. And actually, you'll give the offering because near you is an offering plate here in the congregation. And uh, you will just uh, put, place your offering in, in the plate there. And our usher will come and receive those in a little bit. And also, if you are... Uh, not ready to give right now and we kind of caught you off guard there's going to be two plates at the back as you leave here as well for those of you who are watching today thank you for uh, your continued giving in the way you have been and supporting the local church it's been phenomenal during these months so we thank you so much for how you've been still uh, supporting in so many different ways in your local church in these days so Pastor Trevor uh, pray for us this morning and God bless you as you give today let's pray Father, thank you for this time we have together to come and worship and finally be back in person and um, in your presence here. Father, be with us um, in this day as we are together in your worship. Be with Pastor and the words he brings. Um, and Emily is the worship she continues to lead with, lead us. And Father, thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you for the work that you're doing through everything going on right now. And thank you for being constant and always steady and everything going on and in our uncertainty. Thank you for all that you do. Now in this time of giving, uh, may the giving be blessed um, and bless your kingdom and further your kingdom. And thank you for all that you do and we love you in your name. Amen. Come and give. Praise God from whom all blessings flow.
Thank you, Pastor Emily, and thank you, Praise Team, for uh, wonderful leading us in worship this morning. We so much appreciate it. I, um, I've never uh, really been uh, a boat person, um, never owned a boat. It's always good to know someone who does. Uh, never uh, have I had a conversation with Arlene about should we buy a boat. Uh, I know where she is on that, but I don't want to boat. Um, I don't like being out on large bodies of water. I'm not a whole lot of fun, am I, with that? But during these days, it's good to be in wide open spaces and, uh, you know, golf courses are one of those places. You can be there and there's not a whole lot around you. Except when I play, I'm usually trying to find my ball in the woods somewhere. But Jesus, his ministry was around boats. And um, Jesus had experiences with boats and the disciples and he called some from the boat, and he sent them on the boat, and Jesus preached from the boat, and um, different things happened with Jesus and the boat. Um, I remember one episode with myself with, with boat. We were, we were in Canada, and, and we were on Lake Simcoe there ne- next to the Nazarene campground. And uh, there at the camp, while you're there, there's usually someone who owns one of those boats that is parked down the dock down there that will invite you to come with them to go out on the boat. And uh, so it, it's a fun ride out there and that sort of thing, you know. And, and Emily got to experience that last year for the first time, Lake Simcoe, Canada, the camp. And I remember, it was, I think it was one of my first times Arlene came with me, and I, I was, we were getting ready to take off, and it was one of those places where when you take your children out there, there's actually a place where you can kind of, kind of drop anchor and there's like it's just six feet deep so it's a nice place for the kids to go out and play and, and that sort of thing and get the get the, the pool noodle out and that sort of thing and ride a little sea dews around that and all that and I, I looked I was just kind of looking off the side of the boat and I don't know why it happened but it happened my glasses just slipped off my face and went right into the water and when it got into the water, you, ever, you know, you watch those shows and, and, and things kind of in the water just kind of float, drift down. That's what it was doing. And I feel like I watched it for three minutes go down. And it was just like that fast. And we, we, were, we were going. And I said, Arlene, my, my glasses, my glasses have fallen off my face. They're in the water. And so the driver of the boat hears that. He circles back around. And I'm trying to kind of keep my eye on where, where we were when my glasses fell in the water. And so Arlene says she sees them, and Arlene dives off the boat into the water. Now, this this sounds very, very uh, heroic of Arlene, but it was like six feet at that moment, okay? But she goes all the way down to the bottom, six feet down, and she said the reflection of the glasses were actually, the sun was hitting the glasses still, and she could see the glasses. I just thought it was like, you know, from heaven, you know, the, the music and everything were helping Arlene find the, where the glasses were. And so she came up with them. And it saved my life that week because there's no way I'd be able to walk around the rest of the week trying to preach to people, trying to talk to people, see anybody, because all of you are a blur right now. So it, it's, 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 she saved my life. So boats and I never have really gotten along, okay? I, I, I sunk a boat. Boat was my ride at Opryland the one year I wrote, worked at Opryland. And it was a Ryman's Ferry raft ride, and I actually put too many people on a boat, and it sunk, okay? And it flipped the people out into the water. And I kept my job, but uh, we lost the ride because the next year they put in the old mill screen at the same location, which got everybody wet. So I feel like I'm the one that helped them kind of see what they needed to do with this old ride that they had going because people wanted to get wet with it. So boats and I have never had a good history. But I'm fascinated, so fascinated by, by the Scripture and Jesus with boats. And there's so much ministry that took place. And, and, and here we are, one of the most probably well-known passages of Scripture of Jesus that is not actually in a boat, but his disciples are in a boat. And it's a sudden storm that comes up. 
and, and they are somewhat entrapped inside this storm and not knowing what to do. And so we see it recorded and not one, not two, but three gospels. Very unusual. And I think it tells us also the significance of it that three gospel writers put it in their gospel. So we're going to look today at Mark, John, and end up with Matthew. And uh, we had Brian Arner here last week with a concert, and I appreciate the offering, everybody. It's, it's nearly $1,800 that, that's come in for that. So we're thankful for how you took care of Brian last week. And so speaking of Brian's, I gave Brian Duncan the week off upstairs. You know, he's usually my scripture guy when you're when you, when you watching uh, like you are on Facebook Live now, and, and the scripture comes up. It's Brian that does that. Those of you who are here, you see the screen come up. So he had the week off. So now he gets to do three gospel readings. So he's got a lot to, a lot to take care of up here for, for me today. But so we're, it's going to be on the screen for you. But it's Matthew. Uh, we'll be coming back to Matthew. But we're going to start with Mark and go to John. So it's Mark 6 and John 6. So we go to Mark 6 first. Mark 6, chapter 6, verse 45, and Mark uses the verbiage immediately, immediately. He made his disciples get into the boat. Notice that. He made his disciples. He didn't ask them to. He made them. You're, you're getting into the boat. Get into the boat. Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and going ahead of him to the other side uh, to uh, 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 Bethesda while he dismissed the crowd and after saying farewell to them he went up on the mountain to pray when evening came the boat was out on the sea and he was alone on the land when he saw that they were straining at the oars against adverse wind he came towards them early in the morning walking on the sea listen to this he intended to pass them by on the sea. So Jesus is saying, you take the boat, I'm going to pray, and while you're in the boat, I'm going to walk on by you and meet you on, on the other side. He, it seems like Jesus didn't want to be seen here. He is walking by them. He, he came towards them. He, he intended to pass them by. But, verse 49, when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought it was a ghost. They thought it was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him and were terrified. They were terrified. So the sudden squall comes. They're straining their oars against this wind. And then they see what they think is a ghost. For in verse 50, for, for they all saw him and were terrified. But immediately he spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he got into the boat with them, and the wind ceased, and they were utterly astounded. For they did not understand about the loaves, which just happened. Jesus just fed the 5,000, not in counting men and, and I mean, women and children, so roughly fifteen to 20,000 people Jesus just fed. They didn't understand that, but their hearts were hardened. So let's just take that in, remember sort of what we read here, and let's go to John, John's gospel, chapter 6, and starting with verse 16. John 6, 16. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. So there is some differences here. There is some similarities here between Mark and, and John's reference of this same storyline. But when we go to Matthew, there's something different 
There's something that is there in Matthew that was not in Mark, that was not in the Gospel of John. And that is the disciple named Peter who gets out of the boat and wants to walk on the water with Jesus. So why is it that, that the same storyline that we just read from Mark and John never mentions Peter? Because usually, and I've been guilty of this, preachers will usually read those three accounts and say, well, I like the one with Peter better. Because there's more there. There's more of a storyline. There's, there's more. It seems like you can preach more. But you have to remember sometimes not what is there, but what is not there. That is really trying to show you what really is the main point of the whole entire storyline. And believe me, just because Peter shows up in Matthew's gospel doesn't make Peter the headliner. Anytime Jesus is in the scripture, Jesus is the one who is the headliner. Everyone else is the supporting cast. Peter just makes the supporting cast role a little bit better. I think he was nominated more than anybody else. Best supporting role as a disciple. So we get to... And we're going to find out what this deeper meaning is in a few moments. But in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 through 33, we we read a more familiar version of what we just read from Mark and John. And here it is. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat. So there it is again. He made the disciples get into the boat. And going ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. Now that sounds verbatim like like Mark. And then we read um, in in verse, uh, right right there in, in verse 23, when evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land. Far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, Again, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and called him, saying to him, you little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Now, notice something here. We talked about, we noticed that that Peter is now the disciple here. He's he's talking to the Lord. But for the second time, the disciples have, have said they've solved something, and they deem it a ghost. And from which this comes from, it doesn't mention the word ghost, but but to know what Jesus' culture was like in those days and what the water meant and what the water meant for those folks in Jesus' day was the water was the abyss. The water was shoal. The water was hell. And in the depths of that water was, was some crevices in, that, in, that, in the depths of the sea where sea creatures would come out. And three creatures would come and devour and, and take on. And, and see, the disciples are thinking, not just if it is a ghost, but is it one of these sea creatures that is coming for us while we're out against this wind that we cannot handle and we're tired and we really want something else to happen? So here, 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 is, here is the deal. Peter speaks up. Peter always seems to be is the one that always speaks up. 
But we see Peter as a heroic role here because he's really in defense of the other disciples. He is there for their protection because notice what Peter says to the Lord. He says, Lord, if it is you. He's not sure. Lord, if it is you, call me out. Have me come to you on the water. And he heard the voice say back to him, come. And the Bible says that Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. And then he noticed what? A strong wind, the scripture tells us. And he became what? Frightened. And what happened? He began to sink. And it's at, it's at this moment here that we've heard the sermon spoke of, and I've probably have been guilty of this more than any, that what caused Peter to sink? And we've all heard probably he watched the storm and somehow he moved his eyes off Jesus, and when you remove your eyes off Jesus, you begin to sink and you lose faith. And really the, the, the word of the Lord here is Peter was still overcome with the surroundment of the circumstances that he found himself in before the Lord even came to the boat. It was the wind. It was a terrifying thought. It, all those things were coming back to him, even with the Lord's presence there. If it is you, Lord, tell me to come to you. Come. And he goes out to the Lord, and he remembers his circumstances and becomes frightened and begins to sink. And we see that, that the Lord grabbed him when he said, Lord, save me. And he said, you little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt what? What's little faith have to do about? What faith is need to be restored? And we probably always, have, you know, there, there was a book written by John Ortberg, pastor in California, that if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. I'm going to ask us to turn that around today. Flip that. Because I believe this is it. The disciples are in something that they, that they cannot control. They're in a sudden windstorm. They're frightened. I wonder how many of them is asking, well, if Jesus was on the boat with us, this wouldn't be happening. Where is Jesus? And we read one gospel where, where, where Jesus is trying to actually pass them by and get to the other side ahead of them. The disciples are, are in something that they can't control. The disciples are in something that they cannot get out of themselves. And the disciples are in something that they cannot let go of the fear that has overcome them. And the disciples are in something that makes them emotional basket cases. And playing on that, for the baskets were full, 12 of them, with leftovers from what had just happened before. They watched the loaves. They watched all these thousands of people being fed. And they're thinking, will this ever end? Will this darkness ever cease? When will the sudden storm end? Jesus was going on past there. But he was held by compassion from what he saw the disciples having to endure. They've been rowing for all that time, oaring out there for where they're at, three to four miles, one of the scriptures tells us, and here they are with this sudden storm and looks like no end in sight. And Peter asked, if it is you, and Jesus had to cease the doubt. So we always give Thomas a, a rough time for being doubting Thomas, but Peter doubted Jesus first. If it is you. And Peter is overcome by the storm and the current situation that he finds himself in, the condition. 
And here it is, my friends. Here it is. I've been thinking this week about this pandemic and how long it's been going. And people will know how long is it going to be till things get back to what is normal anyway. I mean, we're almost six months till we started. Um, it's disrupted our lives. It's changed the course of everything. And, and, then, and then sometimes you start getting together by yourself. And when you do that, you start having a little pity party about how bad it is. And then you start thinking about other people who are worse than you who have to deal with this and go to it every day with work. It's their job. It's their calling. I'm talking about doctors and nurses and first responders and and people every day that that are in it, and they can't escape it. Most of us can't escape for a while. We can do something else. Maybe you have a boat. (laughs) You can get out. You can go do something. And try to remove ourselves from it. And what I also see it happening, what I also see it doing, is even when I preach this, even when I say this sort of thing, some of you kind of look at each other and give some of each other little side remarks like, oh, here we go. Because everybody's got an opinion about this. And if you want to make friends these days, oh, just give your opinion about it. You'll make loads of friends. You'll have so many friends, you would not, you will, Christmas cards are going to cost you a fortune this year. You know I'm being sarcastic in that, of course. It, it's not that at all. And what I also see that it seeps into the church. And then good Christian people start looking at each other and start going, oh, man, do you see them? They wore a mask the whole service. You hear what I'm saying, church? We start putting people in categories. What ends is friendships. What ends is trust. What ends is relationships because you don't agree with somebody about why they think about something. And now it's more evident than ever because we live in the most opinionated generation that's ever walked the face of the earth. Just go to social media for five minutes. You'll find something. And it's very not sarcastic it is in your face I don't agree with you you're wrong you're of the devil all this this is bogus this is fake this is mask this is political this is about money it's about everything and it's getting to the point where I notice it seeping into the church and that is the devil's breeding ground for causing disunity and disruption Be careful. It's not about us getting out of the boat. It's allowing Jesus to get in the boat. Because notice in every gospel that when Jesus gets in the boat, something happens. The winds cease. Peace is brought in. Can you imagine that? When Jesus is present, when Jesus' all-powerful presence is where he should be in the midst of you, with you, where you are, he wants to come into where you are, not calling out, if it's you, Lord, let me come where you are. No, he's trying to come to you. And when he does get to you, it's peace. It's understanding. That's what the Bible says. It's a peace that surpasseth all understanding. It's allowing Jesus to be who he is. It's allowing Jesus to be Jesus. And let people come to him. Let him come to where you are. Let him bring his peace. Let him bring his prosperity. Let him bring his positive. Let him bring what he has to bring to you. Trust him. And the storm around us will cease. This will someday cease. I don't know when. <laughs> I was talking to someone the other day about, you know, when will we see people come back to church like we did before, you know, and I don't know if that ever will happen. I don't know. 
I know this year's shot. I know 2020 we're not going to see a crowd. I don't think it will be until Easter next year that we find out who belongs to Grace Point and who thinks Grace Point belongs to them. It's the day we live. It's the time we're living in. It's what's happening. So I want you to realize if, if your world is, is coming apart, if, if you're full of anxiety and, and just, you know, everywhere you turn, you're, you're faced with this. It's in your face. I mean, everywhere you go. I want you to realize you can have peace through the storm that we're currently in. And you're out there in the middle of the lake and you're worn out, you're tired. You're emotionally drained. You're physically drained. And let me just remind you today, Jesus is the one that's walking on the water. He's doing the work. And he's coming on to you where you are at. He is coming to where you are. And he's wanting to, to get captured within what you're dealing with. And he wants to bring that peace that only he can bring. And when he does, there's a calmness about it. And you're able to breathe again. You're able to kind of row your boat again. Don't forget Jesus. Don't you try to figure all this out. Don't try to show how smart you are with your opinion. Just give someone Jesus. Lead them to the peace, the Prince of Peace. Let him be the one to come to where they're at. And allow them to only trust him. Oh, if we can only trust him more. Love him deeper. And love people. That's how Christ has come to us. He has come to us. He's come to where we are. He always has and he always will. Let's not forget it. Would you stand with me, please, this morning, those of you who are with us in the congregation this morning. Father, I give you praise today for just the reminder to allow us to realize in this storm that we're in that there is peace in the midst of it all. And it's you. It's our Savior. It, God, it's your Son who brings that peace, who is the author and perfecter of that peace. And Father, I just love you today and thank you for that reminder. And Lord, we pray for our church. We pray for our people. We we pray for our community, our state, our country, our world. I pray, Father, the church will not turn on its own, but we would focus out to those who need the peace of Jesus. May it be exemplified through our lives. Thank you, Lord, today for all you are and for who you are. And in the strong name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone said, amen. Pastor Ilmi is going to lead us in a song this morning. God bless you. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take. I'm so glad I learned to 
Thanks for you who are watching, and we'll be praying for you throughout this week. Thanks for you for joining us today in person. You are dismissed. God's blessings upon you and your peace. Be safe. Be careful. We love you. Thank you.